All right. Well, welcome formally, everybody. We're really grateful that you're here uh, for our first community faculty town hall. And we just wanted to put this together as a sort of way to say thank you and hello and keep you updated about all of the great things going on at the College of Medicine to be here to answer questions and, um, you know, just a, a nice way to engage. I've got a formal PowerPoint, which I'm going to pull up and we'll kind of run through some quick slides. We cover all of the, um, you know, the, the different areas of, of what's happening at the medical school. And um, with that, I'm going to invite our, well, here's our agenda. And um, the first person on our agenda is our amazing Dean, Dr. Julie Politsis. And I'm going to turn it over to you to kick us off. Thanks so much, Dr. Drowis, for um, picking this off. And, you know, I, I really want to start by thanking all of you, you know, as a uh, medical school that is of the community for the community, we rely on all you do. And we know that, um, you know, much of this is volunteerism and we couldn't be more thankful to have you on our team and help you achieve all the great things that, that we achieve for our students and for the community. Next slide. Uh, so, you know, I think uh, we, we've done a number of things over the past year. I, I started at FAU uh, last Valentine's Day because I love FAU. And um, pretty quickly, we launched FAU Health Network, uh, which many of you know about, some may not, um, but wanted to talk a little bit about FAU Health Network. And, you know, one of our slogans for this is that the time is now. Um, next slide. So when you think about, um, you know, many major metropolitan areas, it, these can be synonymous with academic health care. So you think about Boston, you think about Mass General or Brigham and Women's, you think about New York, you think about NYU, uh, think about LA, you think about Cedars sinai UCLA. And when you think about our region, you know, it, it's really important that, um, you know, we have an academic presence um, for medicine. And this is something that um, serves our area well. In our catchment areas, we're defining it as Broward, Palm Beach, um, St. Lucie, <coughs> and Martin County. And, and why is that important? Well, academic healthcare, as all of you know, um, leads to better outcomes. And this is really important for our patients and helps us to address um, many of the needs that our aging population in particular um, uh, suffer with. Next slide. So we've all come together, um, both internal to FAU and external, um, it, it, in this vision of FAU Health Network. And our goal and strategic vision is that we will bring renowned academic medicine to Southeast Florida, driving our community forward and improving the lives of our citizens. When you look at the top 20 hospitals in the country, all of those are academic medical centers. And, you know, we really need to work together to transform the health care that's delivered in our region. Next slide. So why is the time now? Why is that our slogan? Uh, Florida is really great for a number of reasons. Um, one of the reasons, however, that um, we aren't as great or could be better is that we rank 25th overall in healthcare. Now you can argue this is US News and World Report and maybe you know that's not um, a metric that we should be using. But for the state of Florida, which is so uh, so great and so high in population, to be 25th, even if you had a plus or minus uh, on that of two or three points, that's really a problem and we could do better. And what what drives that? Well, you know, there's a lots of subscores that go into that rank of 25th, and really a fundamental issue is access. We rank currently 41st in access to care. 
Now, why is that? Well, you know, we have this growing population. Uh, you know, everybody like myself from New York has figured out how wonderful Florida is and are moving down here in droves. Um, the population is increasing. We know that we have some communities where the average age is 65 or higher. And people that are 65 and up use healthcare at a rate of five to eight times the general population. So this population increase this aging population, the aging of our doctors, um, these all lead to this issue. And, you know, I think all of us are faced day in, day out with the nursing shortage, but this isn't isolated to nurses alone. There's also issues with physician shortages, which are only going to get worse as our population grows and ages, as well as social work shortages. And how did we pick, um, you know, this area as our catchment area? Well, simply, these are where our six uh, FAU campus are, and they extend from Harbor Branch up in the top of St. Lucie all the way down to Davie. Next slide. So while we wanted to be, a, you know, a, somebody that brought everybody to the table, we realized that, you know, we are one of many people that are important to making making these changes happen. And so some of you on the phone and uh, some other people at, um, at these institutions have been very integral in partnering with us on a number of efforts in forming FAU Health Network. Uh, we went out and asked our hospital partners, um, you know, whether they would be interested in this uh, a coalition of collaboration, as well as um, other um, healthcare districts, uh, non-for-profits like Caridad, uh, Chamber of Commerce, other institutions such as Palm Beach Atlantic and Palm Beach State. And across the board, we all said, you know, it, it's the time to collaborate and brainstorm and think about not only how we can make more doctors and nurses and providers of healthcare, but also how we can share best practice, educational efforts, research efforts to really give people in South Florida the healthcare that they deserve. Next slide. So why FAU and why have we been at the hub of this? Well, you know, I, I think one, there are so many things that are special about FAU. I know I'm a, a bit biased, but, um, you know, we really have always been of the community for the community since our inception. And, you know, I think it's important to note that we're not just a medical school. Uh, we have a nursing school. We have a college of social work. We have engineers. We have scientists. We have institutes focused on these regions. And, you know, all of the colleges across the board are interested in proving health. You know, we even have partnerships going on with arts and letters where we're looking at arts and healing programs and best curriculum. Um, we have a long-standing graduate medical education consortium with Baptist and Tenant. These are all the building blocks to uh, of this health network. Next slide. And we have a track record. So uh, the College of Medicine is, um, it, it, is very competitive. Uh, so we currently have 100 applicants for each spot. And to help address, you know, uh, being able to recruit and retain many of our students in South Florida, we're actively expanding our class size. Um, our hope here is that we can address our workforce shortages and, you know, get people from our community to stay in our community. We do pretty well with that through our GME consortium right now with 50% of our residents staying in Florida. Our nursing school does even better with 90% of the nurses that we train staying in Florida. So there's a lot of things that we bring to the table and we've had um, a, a lot of generosity over the years and especially over this last year with the $28 million gift yeah. from Ann and John Wood. Next slide. So in summary, uh, what we hope to accomplish in FAU Health Network is to provide elevated academic medical care in the region with all our partners, to grow uh, our faculty practice, to reinvest in academics, to ensure that our research and educational mission um, grow with us, to recruit and retain the best faculty, 
to strengthen teaching programs and grow our research footprint and to increase the availability of high quality patient care in our market. Thanks so much. And I'll turn it back to you, Dr. Dallas. Sorry, I was muted. Thank you so much, Dean Politzis. Our um, next update is gonna come from our incredible Vice Dean for Medical Education, Dr. Sarah Wood. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for being here tonight. It's nice to see some familiar names and uh, faces. And uh, this is my, I, I love doing presentations like this where I get to talk a little bit about all the fantastic things going on at the College of Medicine. Uh, next slide, Stephanie. Um, so there's a lot going on for education at the college. I know um, many of you on this call are involved in our medical student training programs, um, but we also have graduate students yeah. training at the College of Medicine, getting their master's and PhDs in biomedical science. We have a post-baccalaureate program now that is up to 18 post-bac students in the current year, and that's even expanding next year. And we've built um, with our amazing uh, Baptist oh, and um, we've There's just our residencies to over 177 trainees. So a lot of growth and, and accomplishment. Um, and we're sort of just at, at the beginning. Next slide. So and actually, so I, I'm going to brag a little bit. Um, yeah, you, you can change the slide, Stephanie. Thank you. Uh, so we, um, we really do have a tremendous um, MD program at the college. Uh, it's one of those things that um, the, the proof is in the pudding of our amazing uh, students. And we really feel like our students are our ambassadors in that they really represent our close-knit community, very well-trained students, very um, focused on clinical skills as well as humanism and professional identity development. Uh, they get trained really well at our simulation center. Uh, and ma many of you all have volunteered there doing OSCEs and being involved in our training programs with our standardized patients. Our standardized patients are many me members of our community who come to help train future doctors. Um, we do service learning projects. So our students are embedded all across uh, the counties, really doing lots of great work um, to, to, to really embed themselves, as Dean Plitz has said, of the community and for the community. We also have longitudinal integrated clerkships. So our students spend most of their clerkship year at one or two hospitals really becoming enmeshed in their systems. And then hopefully um, someday coming back and being employees of our ho hospital partners and back uh, at, at FAU. Next slide. Um, many of you know our curriculum. I just wanted to show it in a graphic because there's lots of opportunities for our community faculty to get involved, either get giving lectures, volunteering in small groups, teaching in the simulation center, or being a preceptor, or um, overseeing a rotation in the third or fourth year. So we do, although we have a really tremendous group of uh, full-time core faculty at the university and the med school, we're also always very excited to partner with all of our physicians out in the community. Next slide. Um, we couldn't do it without our partners and our partners have been, you know, many of you all have been here with us since the beginning and we're continuing to expand just in the last year or two. We've developed more and more programs with the West Palm VA. Um, other pr programs are starting to be d developed with um, our G GME partners. Tenet has two new hospital partners, uh, G Good Samaritan and um, Palm, Palm Beach Gardens. So lots of opportunities for our trainees to really make a difference in the region. Um, and it also speaks to some of the workforce needs that we're hoping to, to address. Uh, next slide. So th this is where my bragging comes. Um, our students fill out a survey every year and they we, com we compare our students to all the national students, uh, med students around the um, US. And if you look at when you ask our students how satisfied they are with the quality of their medical education, um, our rankings are very high and above the national average, which is in a large part to 
the amazing curriculum, the faculty, the community, and just the overall support they feel um, within FAU and within our um, our Palm Beach and Broward County uh, medical student communities. Next slide. They also really rate, I mean, we get a perfect score for our clinical medicine and introduction to the patient rotations, which is where our students are with preceptors in the simulation center at Caridad, at Mission Cl Clinic. So we really feel like our programs to train our students to be ready to go into clinical settings are very strong and our students um, really rate them incredibly highly. Next slide. They feel very prepared to start residency programs, not only because they're clinically prepared, but because we've taught them evidence-based medicine, communication skills, ethics, professionalism, and the care of patients from different backgrounds. It's really important for us to train physicians that um, look like the diverse communities they serve and that they really understand the importance of social determinants of health as well. Next slide. Um, we also know that they feel very prepared for residency. And next slide, the program directors all feel like our students who come to their residency programs are very uh, prepared and meet or exceed expectations. So this is sort of the report card for medical schools. And I will say that currently we're doing incredibly well thanks to the university, all our community partners and all the um, faculty and staff that really make this uh, a team effort and the students really appreciate all that hard work. Next slide. Um, so we've been expanding and in fact, next year we're matriculating a class of 80 and under Dean Plitzis's le leadership, the plan is to go to 104 the year after that. So that's the um, matriculating into 2024. And there's a lot of reasons we're doing this. Um, next slide. But one of the main reasons is that we need more well-trained physicians and scientists, not only in our region, but across the nation. There are a lot of healthcare needs. Our re region is growing by leaps and bounds. And as I think I got a note notification, one of the hospitals that the hospital beds are full, we really need to be training healthcare wor workers so that we can uh, expand our capability as our the needs of our re region increase. So we also have, as we talked about before, 100 students apply for every one that gets into FAU. So we want to have more slots uh, to train medical students in our area. We also want to have the a possibility of expanding more pipelines and dual degree programs and pathway programs so that we can really have a diverse and well-trained workforce. Um, and lastly, this is really our mission and vi vision is to serve our patients, serve our communities, and to use our students as a, as a pathway and ambassadors to do that important work. Next slide. Um, so with our expansion, we are counting on our current partners as well as looking to bring on new partners so that we can really expand both our med student programs, our post back programs, our residency programs, and our dual degree programs. All of these programs need placements in clinics, in research, in community service. So we're really trying to expand the impact and we're excited that many other um, partners at, who are part of FAU Health N Network want to be involved and part of um, re reaching our mission and vision. Next slide. Um, so we're also trying to figure out how to envision some exciting new spaces at the College of Medicine to fit our new students. So um, we're definitely always looking for people interested in philanthropic opportunities, naming opportunities to want to help us build amazing spaces uh, for our new medical student expanded class size. And that is in the works. Uh, next slide. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about GME. So as I mentioned earlier, next slide. 
We, our residents are on the front lines. Um, they really were right there in the trenches during the pandemic. And I think that was a turning point for many of our partner hospitals realizing just how essential these residents are. We're working side by side um, with the physicians, the nurses, the teams in the community. And we've also had many of our residents start to take jobs here um, in our partner hospitals in the region. So our alumni base is really increasing and that's exciting to see. Next slide. Um, so you can see the program growth kind of uh, demonstrated graphically here, um, but with our five residency programs and four fellowships, we're now up to 177 trainees and, uh, and pro only poised to, to grow from there. Next slide. So um, we graduated 46 residents and fellows last year, our first graduating class of psychiatrists, which are much needed. We're graduated and two neurologists and we're continuing to graduate um, a significant number of internal medicine, emergency medicine and surgery residents. Many of them are going into amazing fellowships. And as we mentioned, a uh, significant number are staying in Florida and in Palm Beach County. Next slide. So, and we've been really working on strategic planning, not only for the College of Medicine, for, but for the GME um, residency program. So many thanks to all our partners who have worked really um, hand in hand with us to think about what is the future of healthcare training in Palm Beach County. Next slide. Um, so I just want to thank all of you for those of you who are involved in, you know, running our incredible programs and helping us expand them, helping us have more impact, not only in education, but research, community service, everything you get involved with just makes us better. So thanks for all your efforts. Next slide. Um, we every year we have a faculty recognition re rece reception to thank all our cl clinical faculty who are teaching our third and fourth year students. So we're hoping you guys are going to join us on fe February 7th. You might see some of these slides again. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but we're really hoping you'll come have a reception, get to see our students, get to see our faculty. And it's a, a great event where we get to really give out some teaching awards and thank everyone for um, all they do to contribute to medical education at FAU. So um, I think that's it for me. And I'm going to uh, pass it along to Dr. Jennifer Caceres. She is my other right hand doing, um, she's our senior associate for student affairs and admissions, and she's going to take us through all the exciting things going on in that arena. Dr. Caceres. Thank you, Dr. Wood. So um, it's really exciting, truly, how much um, and how far the college is, has gotten. Um, and I truly, I think we all really want to say thank you because the successes that I'm going to share with you as an update really could not have happened without all of the affiliate faculty. Again, we do we know we have strong you know faculty that are right home based at FAU, but we are a community based medical school, which means so much of what we rely on as far as success and support of our students really comes from our affiliate faculty. So we I just want to make sure you know that we know how important you are to us. So next slide, please, Stephanie. So um, as in prior years, we're very excited to say that our students continue to do very well in the match um, with 100% placement year after year, and they continue to do, um, I think, as far as the diversity of specialties and the level of competitiveness continues to even increase further year after year. Uh, Stephanie, next slide, please. Which you'll see here, uh, we do have a good spectrum, uh, a large spectrum of the types of specialties that our students go into. Obviously, what you don't see here are the ones that we also encourage as a community based medical school that go into primary care, internal medicine, pediatrics, family medicine. Uh, but we did want to highlight here that as a community based medical school, it's with all of your help that we can also expand beyond that. And you can see how our students are matching in really competitive specialties in the surgical specialties and combined programs. And then the actual programs that they match into are also really top tier training programs. Um, next slide. And then kind of going back to why we have a medical school here is that we obviously want to serve our community. And so hopefully training all these great doctors that 
hopefully they'll come back and take care of us one day and those who already need their help. Um, so we do like seeing a good percentage of our students that graduate practicing and Obviously, if they match here in Florida, there's an increased likelihood they'll actually stay here and practice. So we do have year after year about a 30 percent um, match rate in within Florida. It, it varies slightly um, year year from year, but it's about a third each year in total. Uh, Stephanie, next slide. And then what this is what makes us feel like we're really doing a good job because not only are we producing you know, great doctors out there, but indeed our outcomes are starting to show what we want to do, which is again, serve Florida. Um, so 40% of the first three classes of alumni are now starting to come back um, because they've either done residency fellowship and it's really nice to see that they're actually choosing to come back home or that we hope they call it home. Um, and that after all that now a couple of decades of work, um, we really are impacting the health of our own community. So next slide. And just kind of going beyond the graduates and what they do in the match to show you how our students are becoming even more active within the community. There's been a 50% increase in the number of student organizations just in the past three years. You know, heavily started off with specialty interest groups, but if you log in here, you'll see that there's more and more advocacy groups. So they're really going out there and going beyond just the classroom and doing even just research and scholarship, but helping those in need and trying to help um, ensure that their efforts and their roles as future physicians go beyond just them studying um, and matching. Next slide. And this is our students making us proud. Um, the things that they are doing, they're presenting, whether it be community outreach that they're presenting outside or research and scholarship. You can see regionally and nationally, they're going throughout the country representing FAU um, and also again, spreading really important medical knowledge um, from a medical student perspective out into the community, along with all the great mentors, some of which I'm sure are right here, thanks to those who contribute their time, volunteer their time to help and mentor our students and help develop those research and scholarship opportunities. Next slide. Um, these are just some fun pictures of seeing our students out in the community, whether it be doing a blood drive, out doing arts and humanities, um, or community events. Um, they also do training for Stop the Bleed. So they really do look at many different aspects of how they can serve the community and engage with them. Next slide. So that's kind of our student affairs update with admissions. Um, we did peak during the pandemic with over 6,000 applications. Before the pandemic, we were about 38 hundred to almost 4,000. Definitely see how the pandemic impacted our school, just like the rest of the country, um, as far as increased numbers. So we're at about 5,000 for last year cycle. We're in an, a current active cycle right now. So we'll see where that ends. Um, the last cycle with the entering class of 2022, um, remaining very competitive. Our mean MCAT is 513 and a mean GPA of 3.74. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so just to give you an idea of, you know, the way we do our reviews, it starts off with you know, some general review, making sure all requirements um, from an administrative standpoint are met, and that goes to our director of admissions. And then from there, they go into review by faculty and medical student reviewers, predominantly faculty, and lots of affiliate faculty. So again, many of you on the call may be um, helping us with this. So, um, and, uh, Thank you. Um, and so I just thought I could take this as an opportunity just to highlight how important it is to have great faculty who are invested in our school to help us continue to recruit the brightest and the best. So if you are interested in participating in the admissions process, um, please let us know. We will provide training if you haven't done it before. Um, it would be really helpful and, and another way you can help contribute to us getting um, the best students. Uh, Stephanie, please. Um, we also do, do now do virtual interviews. Um, so back in the day, everything was in person, but the pandemic pushed us to quickly learn how to interview virtually, um, whether it be for undergraduate medical education or residency positions, there's a continued move to do virtual interviews more long-term. So we're, we're now into our third cycle uh, with interviews continuing virtually. Um, we also have implemented the multiple mini interview style where there's shorter interviews, but multiple interviews um, during that time. So again, if you wanna get engaged in this process, um, start to see what our applicants are like and help us pick out the best ones, let us know. We can offer training and we're always looking for more help um, when available. 
Next slide. Um, and that, that's really, so I just really want to say thank you for all that you do. Um, there's a lot of steps that start from the 5,000 plus applications to get to everything that Dr. Wood talked about straight through into residency and those outcomes that hopefully ultimately feed the goal of what Dean Pilitz has shared with you, which is um, kind of really helping the entire kind of healthcare workforce beyond just our local neighborhood, but even having a larger footprint. So um, again, thank you so much for all that you do. We really appreciate it. And I think we're going to pass it on to Alicia Roots now. She is our Director of Community Engagement and our Interim Director for Diversity and Inclusion. So she can share with you more about the great community outreach that the college and the students have been doing. Alicia? Hi, thank you so much, Dr. Caceres. And yes, just going to add on to what you've already learned about particularly our students, our medical students, and what they're doing, whether it's it's in the classroom with academic service learning beyond the classroom um, with CARED and some of the other federally qualified health centers in the area. I have the privilege of working with the medical students with our community outreach program. So the program is 12 years strong, started when the university was started, the college was started. Um, thank you, Stephanie. And my favorite thing is always showing the pictures. It brings me a lot of joy to work with the medical students, but also to work with the 500 plus middle and high school students that visit our campus each year. And every all the activities are hands-on, engaging. They are augmenting the education that these medical academy students are getting in the classroom. So there are over 50 medical academies in Palm Beach County middle and high schools. Um, and as you can see by the gentleman in the bow tie, our medical students, um, not only lead, but they also volunteer to facilitate. Um, and we have them in the Clinical Skills Simulation Center. They run cases on the mannequins. And then we also have them in the anatomy lab. So this is when the students come as a cohort with their classroom. And they come multiple times a year. And we're very fortunate that when we get them as sixth graders, we have them in seventh grade and eighth grade as well. And then we are able to capture some of them um, as they go on their path in, into high school. Um, one of the ways that um, you could become involved, and we've, we've had faculty that's been involved before, community faculty, affiliate faculty, is that we have a Bridge to Medicine program, which is a Saturday program, and that is for juniors in high school. And it is an awareness and recruitment and um, career sort of advising information. I know Dr. Wood comes every year and does a session for us. The commitments, 45 minutes on a Saturday morning, talk about what your specialty is, what your passion is, what your life as a physician looks like, not just in the clinic or in you know the operating room but also as a lifestyle and the students have a lot of a lot of great questions and it'd be very helpful to have you there but we would welcome you in in any capacity and again i appreciate everyone who has already volunteered and you can next slide stephanie thank you and we've already talked about caridad and please feel free to reach out to me if you would like to get involved. And now I'd like to invite Dr. Alter, who is our Assistant Dean for Clinical Research, to present. So thanks, Alicia. Um, as you mentioned, I am Scott Alter, the Assistant Dean for Clinical Research. This is a new role for me and for the college. And part of my role that I'd like to see is to actually increase clinical research across the college. We already have a pretty robust bench program and, and, and laboratory-based research. But what I'd like to do is increase research amongst our community faculty as well. Uh, next slide, please. Some of the goals I'd like to do is encourage collaboration engagement across the entire college. So currently we have, like I mentioned, a lot of um, PhD bench researchers and a, a smaller amount of clinical researchers. What I'd like to do is encourage collaboration between our current learners, that being residents, students, fellows, with our faculty members. And I think that piece currently could be strengthened. So I invite you all to help us build the mentorship between our learners and our faculty members. Overall, we'd like to increase the overall output of scholarly activity, whether that be presentations, publications, posters, abstracts, all of the above. 
Um, as well, what I'd like to do is help to provide the educational um, material and support to our community faculty members to help them increase their own research as well. Next slide, please. So for the last couple of years within the medical students, we have grown quite a bit in the number of students participating in clinical re research as a whole, um, students that have had research projects. And we're not quite, we're just about at the national average of the percentage of students who participate in research. Over the last few years, yes, we've been increasing, but the national average has also. So we want to quite, we're not quite there. We want to get a little bit higher. And I think with your support, we can get there. Uh, next slide, please. In contrast, research projects overall, our students, though, do push it forward and get publications and presentations. So we're actually above average nationally of the number of students that go on to have a peer-reviewed publication or present at a national conference, local conference, regional conference, whether that be an oral presentation or poster presentation. So we're far ahead here, but we'd like to get even higher. Next slide, please. What I've been working on with the Office of Research is creating resources for our faculty, um, as well as our students and, and residents. What we have here, um, there's a whole part of the webpage for faculty and staff resources. This is not just research, but I'm highlighting the research portion of it. The QR code here will take you to that webpage. And we have an entire section for research that will take you right to some processes that we have of how to conduct research at a lot of our local community sites. Not all of them are there yet, we're working on it. Um, however, this is, if you're at one of our community hospitals, how to get started in the research process. We here uh, want to help you accomplish research and get involved. So we're providing these resources where even if um, you need to go to another IRB, let's say, or another institution, we wanna help you get that done. We want you to be there to mentor our students, our residents, our fellows. Um, so we're gonna help provide you with that support to get it accomplished. Also on this webpage, one other plug, which if you scroll a little bit further down, there's a link to PubMed, um, which I didn't copy, I didn't uh, put a screenshot here, but um, there's a way to get through the library webpage onto PubMed, easy way to get full access of articles, utilize the library, they're an excellent resource, utilize our librarians, they're here to help you. Um, just one note that you need an FAU login to get this. All of our faculty members have FAU logins, whether you know it or not, you have one. Um, so if you don't know how to get to it, um, just ask your department chair, ask uh, faculty affairs, we can help you with that. Um, but it's an excellent resource that helps you across all of research. Um, and uh, we're here to help you out with that. Next slide, please. So for engagement, again, like I said, we want you to get engaged with us. We want to work with all of you guys. Um, medical students, for the most part, they start doing research at the end of their M1 year. And many students take their summer vacation and do research. So if anybody has any active projects that you're currently doing and you want to work with a medical student, let me know. We can help get you in touch. Um, our residents and fellows, they work year round between three and five plus years during their residencies. So if anyone has any projects they're working on, would like to work with residents or fellows, again, please let me know. Um, what I would like to do is help encourage this collaboration between our learners and the community faculty so that we can help um, promote research across the entire college and make everyone more productive from a research point of view. Thank you. And I think next slide that goes back to Dr. Dramas. Hi, thank you so much, um, Dr. Alter. I, I want to thank all of you that have been sharing tonight about what goes on at our College of Medicine. When you see the outcomes from our students who are matching into these very competitive specialties and programs, it really is about the amazing education that they get, the opportunities to build their CVs through research, you know, all the community engagement and, and things that they do. That's what makes them competitive and allows them um, to match into these um, into these really competitive programs and specialties. So, you know, just, just to tie it all together, that's why we need you. And um, I wanted to introduce Stephanie Gabrielson, who is um, on the call with us. So I'm the Associate Dean for Faculty Affairs. Stephanie is our coordinator and Faculty Affairs is the office that supports you as a, a member of the faculty. And we're just, you know, honored and, and delighted and thrilled um, to be here as a support for you. And um, we're here to help. We're here to help you be the best 
teacher, clinician, member of the faculty um, that you can be. And our role is that we process all of your appointments and promotions. So Stephanie does an amazing job of reaching out to you, getting updated CVs. We have a committee that um, meets that's composed of you know, hospital CMOs, our, some of our faculty and core teaching areas. We have some of our community faculty. We meet and look at all of our faculty, determine appropriate ranks, and there's opportunities to get promoted for great work. We offer continuing uh, medical education opportunities. And I don't know that all of our faculty know this, but just by teaching, you can get a certificate um, for your number of hours that you can use for um, your certifying board. A lot of the certifying boards um, accept those hours. We've got a ton of faculty development resources, opportunities to do you know, CME online if that's something that you need. About two years ago, we launched a teaching academy, which is a really exciting group that celebrates teachers, that celebrates you know, those of us that are really passionate about education and helping our medical students be the best um, that we can be. And many of our community faculty have joined us. We get together, you know, talk about scholarship opportunities, best practices in teaching. We bring um, a visiting scholar each year. This year, we're bringing Dr. Holly Gooding from Emory, and she's an expert in the science of learning, and she's going to be with us on um, February 4th. I'll send around the invitation because it's available remotely, and anybody that wants to join us, we're always happy to have you um, participate in everything that we're doing. We are your academic home, and um, we're just excited to offer, you know, whatever we can. And if there's other things that you feel like would be helpful, just, you know, reach out to us and we're happy to, um, to try to help. So um, these are just some of the research resources that I mentioned. The CME modules are available through either Prime. Teachingphysician.org is an amazing research for, um, resource for teachers. We offer peer review of teaching. If you're new to teaching and you want to know if you're doing a great job and get some feedback that can be helpful from, you know, the, another educator. Our faculty will watch you at the bedside, you know, give a lecture in the Sim Center, whatever you're doing, and you can get some feedback on how you're doing, um, you know, if you, if you um, are looking for suggestions. Again, the Teaching Academy is here. We um, started a group on women in medicine and science, which has been really amazing. It started with faculty. Obviously, we want to engage our residents, all of our students, our medical students, graduate students, um, our fellows. We want everybody to be in our community of women, supporting women. We have a lending library. Um, it's available on campus. We've got lots of books related to professional development, academics, education. Uh, you're welcome to stop by if you're ever on campus. Um, and that's in addition to our amazing digital library. And, you know, you do have access if you're looking for the latest journal article, you know, something that um, has recently come out in your field, we can certainly um, get that for you. So, you know, just let us know how we can help. We've put together um, this website. If you go to our med.fau.edu, there's a link um, under faculty for faculty affairs, and you can see um, many of these resources there. So, and, and this is just a little bit about Teaching Physician, which we have a subscription and we're happy to offer you a login if you want to, you know, what to teach, orienting learners, how to, you know, use evidence-based medicine and point of care resources, all kinds of things for how you work um, better with medical students, residents, and fellows. So um, I hope we've you know, that this comes across, there's lots of opportunities to get more involved. We, you know, teaching, lecturing, precepting, admissions specialty mentoring, shadowing, research, community outreach, philanthropy, fundraising, we're doing it all. And, you know, we really can't do it without you. So if there's something that, you know, you've been wanting to know more about, you've been wanting um, to do with us, just, you know, reach out to any of us, we can, you know, connect you to the, to the right person and, um, and get you more involved. And so, we just want to say thank you. And, you know, these are our email addresses for me, for Stephanie. Uh, if, if you um, have anything that you want to follow up or, or ask us, we are always here um, as a resource. And, um, and we just want to say thank you. So I'm going to stop sharing. And um, that way, if anybody would like to ask questions, we can, we can do that now. I guess we explained Hi, it. 
Yes, this, this is Patricia Anastasio. Hi, Joanna. Hi. Hi, I was driving, so I jumped on maybe one or two minutes late. Um, are you ladies going to be hosting um, this type of meeting on a regular basis? Yeah, so the um, thinking is that we'll do this every six months. Um, you know, we'll, we'll post the recording. This is being recorded. So anybody that's not here, you know, you can share it. Uh, you, know, you know, our CMOs can share it um, around your hospitals. We post a lot of the faculty development things that we do on our website. So, you know, if we have a visiting scholar, we will record it. It's, um, you know, all there under resources and we will post the link to this. So anybody that's not here can certainly watch it. And, you know, we, we're going to do this on an ongoing basis, you know, just, I think the plan is twice a year so that we keep in touch and, you know, keep everybody up to date and, you know, kind of share the latest and greatest. Great, great, thank you. And I'm sure if there are topics or things that you all would like to hear more about, let us know so we can customize the presentations to whatever, seems relevant and interesting, um, but we're just trying to improve the bi-directional communication. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here and for all that you do. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Well, it sounds like there aren't too many more questions.